my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, I'm going to address a video request that was submitted, but this is like a prerequisite to that video request. So I'm going to cover how to install the application totally. And as you can see, this is their GitHub repository. You can find it in github.com slash totally slash totally. And this is a monitoring application for Plex. So this is a Python based application. It's so written mainly in Python and it monitors your Plex server to gather metrics from it. And then you can view details about the use of Plex media server. It has a user interface that is responsive and is the theme is very similar to Plex. It's easy to configure. It's what they say. And uh, it monitors the activity on your Plex media server. You can customize the notifications for activity in streams and stuff that is added to Plex. It allows you to get statistics at the top on the homepage and keeps a watch history where you can filter to find out what each user is uh, watching, etc. It has a, a bunch of other features, honestly. We can go into the uh, website and it has screenshots of the application. So this is an example. And the application, in my opinion, it's not really something you would use if you are just a regular consumer. I think this is more geared towards people that are using Plex and R's as kind of a business. For example, let's say, you know, you live in some kind of third world country where you don't have any restriction on, you know, by law on sharing content and stuff like that. Or let's say you might be a landlord and you're renting apartments and as part of that uh, rent deal, you're giving them access to an instance of Plex or something like that that they can use. And then you want to monitor what they're watching. And uh, if you allow them to request things, you want to see if they are actually watching what they request and stuff like that. So if, if you're trying to go in a kind of business-like approach to content, this kind of helps you on that. And that's why it's a prerequisite for the application that was requested later. And yeah, basically we have the option here to use a Docker container. So we're going to follow that. You can right click here. It'll take you to the Docker Hub page. So that's this. But before that, let's go to the website to see kind of a little bit of what this is about. This is monitor your Plex media server. They have a very nice sense of humor. Like, look at this thing here. A comment by one of the developer's mother. <laughs> totally is the best web application to monitor, view analytics, and receive notifications about your Plex media server. Yeah, I'm sure there's mothers that can say that. Basically, it tells you how to pronounce it. I had to check this first and then what it does. It tells you like what has been watched, who watched it, when and where and how. Here it tells you basically the feature that it has. It can monitor, gives you statistics, it gives you a history, it gives you graphs. Uh, it allows you to sync content. It sees what was recently added to your library, notifications, media information, etc. There's a lot of features here. And here's basically screenshots of the application. So this is an example of the activity page for that in the home. And it tells you, for example, that somebody was watching uh, this movie, uh, Thor Ragnarok, right? And it tells you information about it and for series and all that. So it's pretty nice. It gives you that on the home page. And then next to that, it tells you about the libraries that you have. And then it tells you how many things you have, seasons, episodes, when was the last time that something was accessed from that library and what was played and stuff like that. So it gives you good information on that. Then we see, for example, of TV shows, and then we can see details about the TV shows, like how many things were played in the last day, in the last week, in the last month and forever, and about the users. So it gives you information about what they're watching, etc. So like I said, this looks very business-like. And here, for example, we can see details about series. We can click here and it takes us to all the different users that we have and tells you what's the last thing they played, etc. Where they played it from. So it gives you a lot of analytics here. For example, you can go into details about a specific user. So what they used to play the information, etc. In here, we see the full history on the server. We have the graphs that they mention on the playing and there's probably a lot more graphs there. And in here we have the notification section. So you can see it's a very robust application. It has a lot of features. That's the website. So let's go into the Docker hub page. It's telling us that in this case, this is the image that we're going to pull. 
totally totally this is the official image and we have several tags here so we have the uh, version the beta the latest nightly we're going to use the latest as usual for our deployment so that's good and then if we scroll down a little bit it gives us examples as to how to deploy this now we're going to be using the docker compose version because we're running on 7.2 of synology which allows us to just use that so this is something that we're going to use so let's copy all of that and the first thing i'm going to go into our synology nas and in here as we did before i'm going to go into the projects and i'm going to create a new folder for totally and once we have that there we're going to go into the configs and we're going to create another one for totally there we go now that we have those folders there and we're ready to continue so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into container manager i'm going to go into projects and i'm going to create a new project lowercase totally and then i'm going to say that the path for this is going to be projects totally and i'm going to create a yaml file i'm going to paste what i just copied from their docker hub page and in here as usual make notes here so this is external and container all oh, right so i'm going to remove all of this i'm just going to leave the totally slash totally which is the repository for docker hub and here's the container name i'm gonna say totally restart on desktop that looks accurate and now we have to specify the path to the configuration file so we can get that from here we go into configs totally right click properties copy this path and that's what we're gonna put here there we go so that's the config and then for the process user id 1026 is the default admin for our Synology box unless you have done something else. The group is 100 and the time zone in my case, America, New York. And then here's where you're going to expose a port. I believe that the last one that we used was 8076. So I'm going to go with 8075 for this one externally. And the container listens on 8181. So that is good. Now we're ready to just click next, next. And then we can say we wanted to start the project so let's say done it's going to pull the image it's going to extract all the layers and then it's going to start creating the container that's going to take a while so i'm going to be pausing that and coming back when that is done all right it has finished creating our container so now we're good to check on it all right the logs are showing that there's no additional progress so i'm assuming that the application is ready so let's validate that let's give it time because it is not ready yet all right it took a little bit of time but now it started adding more entries here totally is ready so now we should be able to go into the website reload and here we go we got the web interface for totally set up so we can go ahead and follow the instructions here to set this up let's go with the next here and then it says we need to set up a username for totally so i'm gonna say totally and then the password for this video is going to be password. It's irrelevant. I'm not going to be using this instance. Next. And then we need to sign in with Plex. So that is going to take us the pop-up here. And then we need to sign in. So, and then we get the authentication successful. So that's perfect. So then I can go and click on next. And then we have to specify the details of our Plex media server. So here we have several options. So for this test, I'm going to pick this one here. And the port is correct. So... We can verify and it says it was found so i'm gonna click on next and then it says uh, how much do you want to log your activity it says the interval an item must be in the playing state before logging it uh, okay so so for that it means that if we're playing something if we play a, at least two minutes of it then it's going to mark it as played if for example if you start playing something and you immediately stop it it's not going to recognize it as played. and then you have additional options to disable history in these pages but for that that's good so next, here's about the notifications, letting you know in the settings page, you can set all that up. Next, database import. If you have an existing totally Plex watch or Plexivity, you can import that database. We don't, so I'm gonna go finish. Setup is complete. We have to wait five seconds, which should be okay. And we should be redirected. And there we go. It says, this is the sign in. We can sign in using the Plex account or using totally. So if we go into totally, then we'll have to put that information that I put just now, so totally and password, and it logs us in, and here we are. We have the totally application working perfectly, and it's, we have got some information about the updates, so that's nice. If you want to donate to the developers, you can click here and it'll take you to do that. So let's close this, and here, for example, for this instance of Plex that I connected to, it does that 
the library has in the movie libraries, learning uh, movies, movies that are actual movies. And then for the TV, we have anime and TV shows. And for music, we have music. So that's nice. It was able to recognize all the libraries that are configured in the Plex instance. We can see the statistics based on different options here. So this is by play count. We can select by play duration too. And we can select how many days we want to watch. Currently there's no activity, so that's why it shows empty. And then in here we can see like recently added stuff. You can filter by movies, for example, TV shows, music, videos, etc. So that's really nice. It's a very straight up good way to see information about your instance right at the beginning of the page. If we go into libraries here, then it shows us the information that we saw in the screenshot where we have our libraries. Then we have the amount, seasons, episodes, has it been streamed since we are monitoring? No, and all of that. And then if we go into the users, you'll see the users that are in my uh, instance of the Plex, and that's correct. And then if we go into history, we see the history, but I, ha I don't have anything played, so that's fine. And then in the graphs, we can see graphs, but in my case, there's not a lot to show because there's no data that totally has captured yet. But we can go here into the settings, and if we go into settings, then we can configure all this stuff in here. General stuff is how you want the format of your date to be displayed, etc. This is pretty straightforward. They have good documentation here on what every little thing means. I'm not gonna go deep into all that. That's good. And then here the homepage tells you what you wanna see in your homepage, you select it here. And then the web interface, you have changes here. I would suggest you don't change any of this because you're running a container and that might break things down. And here's the username and the password, perfect. And then it allows you to allow guests to access totally if you want. Here's an API if you need it and you can generate it and view it. So you'll see the API key. Here's information about your Plex media server and the connection that you have to that. That's very nice. Here's where you set up the notifications. Pretty straightforward, everything is well explained. And here's the agents that you use to notify. So you can click here and then you have a bunch of options to notify up to you what you want to use. I'm not going to cover that. Newsletter agents, that's another thing you can do here. So there's a way for you to add newsletter agents. Third party APIs, if you want to integrate with something, you have options here. And for example, for the metadata lookup, you can select something here like the movie database, a TV maze, music brains, that's really nice. And then for the backups, you can create your backups here and you specify here where you want to store it. As you can see, it is pointing to the config directory, so that's fine. We should be able to see those backups in our NAS because we have mapped it to the NAS. If you want to control totally remotely, you have an app that is available to you. All of this information is very well explained by them. Everything has details, so I don't really think it's necessary to discuss anything. And the configuration is really only needed to be done when you set up the application for the first time. So I think this is good. Now we have a totally instance running and it's running fine. It's connected to our Plex. So that's going to be it for this video. How do you set up totally to monitor your Plex server? I hope you liked it. If you did hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so, because that helps us grow and that helps us to get the resources to dedicate more time to creating content like this. Remember, I rely entirely on your support. I am not monetizing this channel. As far as I know, you should not be receiving ads on my videos. So if you want to support me, feel free to go into the link in the description below or use the Bitcoin address on the description below to send me a donation. I'll really appreciate it and it'll help me focus on this channel to address your questions. And that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you on the next one.